This is my chainsaw. I use it for taking down trees and cutting the uh, logs into rounds to then split for my firewood. I never use it to make my bee condos or my bee barns or anything else like that. There's so many different designs out there and I'm going to try and show you what is the best design to go with and why. So over 25 years ago when my dad and I got started in on native bees together it was hard to find uh, decent information and we had a steep learning curve ourselves but we used to just drill blocks of wood and we rolled up pieces of paper we even had plastic clear tubes to try and see what was going on inside that was development of our looking inside the, uh, the bee condo design and uh, this has prompted me to uh, just put out this video to say once and for all can we stop doing this drilling of the block of wood without putting uh, some kind of a liner in it uh, so I'm still seeing the stuff on the internet it's not that simple um, if you're going to do that at least put in a uh, liner uh, it'd be best to have a deeper log or a piece of wood because if you want to have a population of bees that'll do pollination you want females and uh, you want to have them so you can pull them out and extract them females are the ones that do the pollination a simple little block of wood like a 4x4 four four, drilled with holes you're just going to get a lot of males and uh, you know people do this because it's easy to do but it's really defeating the purpose of our longevity of good bees and they pretty them up and make them all colorful and you know really uh, bees don't care uh, if you want to do some kind of a cool color do uh, white yellow or light blue uh, reds and things like that pink they look like gray and black to them so let's look at a variety of uh, some condos but I thought I'd throw in the analogy of uh, pretty condos that a lot of people do sort of like fishing lures or flies a lot of these flies uh, especially um, the, for spin casting and they they uh, they have the appearance to catch the humans uh, attention uh, a lot of these uh, dry flies here are quite drab looking um, and they mimic the actual insect that uh, trout would want to get at the surface of a body of water. So when I tie my flies, I keep that in mind. Plus, sometimes I put a little bit of color on them so that I can see them in the water as I'm tugging them up or bringing them through the water if I'm up on a bank or I'm standing in my boat. But it is quite hilarious to look at a lot of these uh, hunks of uh, metal that we huck out at a fish and really you know they look like a nice piece of candy to draw the attention of a human and I don't think fish really uh, make a big deal out of it uh, personally I've had uh, hunks of white rag on a hook and uh, that's what we grew up with as a family and we didn't have a lot of money and you know when you're losing a lot of hooks you just can't afford to keep buying these things so let's uh, we need to review uh, the life cycle of uh, mason bees in this uh, case uh, to understand what's going on with the condo design because you can really uh, do them more harm than good or or at least you'll be going to all this effort and you won't be doing anything to to get what you really want in the end and that's a good healthy population of bees so the first of all the female comes out uh, she gets mated by the males now she starts to look for a place to nest and she finds a suitable uh, channel uh, width mostly and she goes in there and she finds a nice spot she actually lays down a little bit of mud at the back end and she brings up a little bit of a, a marker just up in front of it and that is telling her that she's got enough length and width to lay a female egg I know it seems bizarre but she can dictate what sex, sex of eggs she's gonna lay and because of that she actually has to choose the amount of food for the female or a male because a female is a larger bee she wants more food so if she measures the cell and it's a larger cell that means she's going to lay a larger bee which means she's going to lay a female and you'll see this over and over again this is what my research was at university and it's really cool she'll then put down the back wall bring in load after load of pollen and nectar she regurgitates the nectar on the pollen makes this mass she keeps piling up till she lays an egg caps it off and she repeats this over and over and uh, uh, when it comes down to the fem females and the males within the channel itself she will 
put the females at the back and as she comes to the front she'll be bringing in more males into her uh, 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 channel and she can decide which uh, sex to lay because she has a spermatheca it's a little organ that she can uh, elicit sperm to go with her egg that she stored from the male when she made it and uh, a fertilized egg becomes a female a non-fertilized egg is a male and you can manipulate this by having too tight of a channel if it's a small skinny little channel she'll, de she'll determine that this is too small for a female so she'll lay more males in the skinny channel and because she also lays males near the end if you have a short channel she'll also lay more males per females in the back so a short channel and a skinny channel equals more males you don't really want more males you want more females uh, one male will mate with lots of females so when you look at uh, long channel trays like I did in my uh, my experiment back in university days so I was going insane lengths I was going up to I think 24 inches at the time it was pretty cool to see what I could get out of it and I still saw people doing things like plastic straws and paper tubes and I still saw plastic which is inferior for uh, uh, bee health because it promoted mold all the moisture that was going on and the other thing was is that the paper tubes was not only an expense uh, but the gaps between the tubes themselves, uh, bees would go in between those as well, and they would log jam all these tubes together. Plus, you had to keep cutting them open and buying paper tubes all the time, and it just wasn't the way to go for my dad and I, so we stuck with our wooden block method. And you can tell that bees will go anywhere, is if you go to even an open tray, they'll go in there, which we had done. And the females will actually work together in one open tray side by side laying down their uh, their their cells and it's a lot of extra work other species of bees will also take in uh, big huge open boxes so here's an anthidium uh, wool carter bee going to my evolved things an emergent box and laying her a whole nest in there so let's start looking at some of the designs that are the best ones to go with. This happens to be what I've got. This is not what I'm trying to do here, promote my own stuff. It's just that a lot of people have copied this design because we did this 30 years ago. And we put this on the internet so that we get people to copy it, but also give us credit. And I've noticed that in the last 10 years, uh, they, it's out, the cat's out of the bag, everybody's doing it now. So wood is the way to go. We put the plastic covers on there, it was for my research, but it's a really cool way to get people started. And if you look at my other videos on how to make bee condos, I just uploaded those last week, you'll see that there's the, uh, the three and the four channel trays that I was making. And I also extrapolated that to an even larger uh, box, and we called it the barn. And we use these in agricultural applications, orchards and farms or whatever. It's just a bigger version of a condo, essentially. This one could be uh, marked up to you know, help the bees uh, differentiate their uh, channel from their uh, neighbors. And uh, you can go round or square, it doesn't matter. It's kind of funny when I hear people say you can't use square. You definitely can use square. You can use a flat open tray. So here's a, a, about a 14 or 15 inch. I don't know how long this one was. It was a long one. And I get bees in it all the time. And it happens to be an old style, square bottomed. This condo goes back 15 years at least and uh, well worn and beaten up. And I hear people say you can't use certain types of wood, it'll all wear out. And it's just not the case. If you look after it, it'll go on for years and years. I get more damage from woodpeckers at the exterior, pecking the holes larger than I do anything else. If you've got a sprinkler system that's spraying on it, that's another matter, but I don't get the rain on them and I don't get uh, sprinklers on my uh, condos. So here's the best way to go is a round tube. And uh, you can uh, use long drill bits if you want or what have you. I have a special tooth blade I have on my, on my table saw. And I've got a locating notch at the front and the back to put a piece of wood in to keep them together. And it's really easy for extracting and cleaning the, con the cocoons out. The only thing is, is you can't see what's going on inside. You don't need to, but it is kind of cool to see what, what is going on. And um, once again, it goes inside of a, a house. This happens to be interchangeable with the uh, 
stacking tray system with the viewing uh, covers on top. And same thing, you got to number it so that you, when you put it back in, you get it the right orientation. The bees don't read the numbers. If you're going to put it in one spot, you got to put it back in the same way. So here's an open tray. You can go shorter on these because they are uh, not a long length um, of a channel. Uh, this one open wide tray, so the bees don't really need a long channel. They just need one open uh, box. And so they go in here no problem. <clears throat> You'll see that I haven't even cleaned this one out yet. I simply extracted all the cocoons out at the end of the year and uh, put it aside um, in the reflection of the plastic you'll actually see some of the residue mud. And there were at least three possibly four females working in this one side by side. And it's kind of fun to do that. Uh, it's great to be able to see that you don't have to go round and it doesn't, you know, when you hear the oh is the square's no good or whatever else, all these things I heard is just a bunch of hooey and uh, the round, I use round bottom with the flat top because it's only way you can actually view inside so putting the clear cover and like I said you don't need to go with the clear cover if you're just gonna go with a drilled hole then use paper tubes to line it make sure they're longer so you get more females if you want to have a long-term population of pollinating bees for your purposes if you're just out and uh, wanting to have bees to look at then go ahead and do whatever you want you'll get males and females or if it's too short you get more males doesn't matter if you just want to look at bees and have fun so be it but if you really want to have a captive group of pollinators go with longer channels and make sure you get into a good cleaning program I've got a video on that I got my it's on my website how to clean this I've been teaching it for many years so it comes down to this thing this is uh, the fishing lure this is what a human would look at and go oh isn't this a pretty little thing it's just a, a branch drilled holes and that's it you think you hang it up and it looks pretty it's just a, a bee trap it's a bee cemetery it's where bees come in and after a couple of years there are just a bunch of mites in there and diseases and dead bees and next thing you know it's just log jam full of nothing it's uh it's like having a garden that you don't weed the weeds just take over so you want to go with a, uh, an apparatus that you can take apart it's kind of neat if you can see what's going on inside, they have to be longer. And they absolutely should be made out of wood. You can't make things out of plastic. Plastic doesn't breathe. Bees don't do this in the wild. They don't really go in plastic. If they do, there's going to be some mortality for sure. So there you go. Different, um, different widths, different lengths, uh, different shapes of the actual channel itself. Go with paper tubes. Go with uh, wood. Do not go with plastic. Do not go with plastic straws. Do not go with plastic condos. I've seen these plastic trays. Just don't do it. It's not good. Make sure you have some marks on the outside. Bees don't read numbers, but some kind of a mark that's different on every one of them so they can align themselves. So red is really good because to the bee's vision it's black. So um, you put colors on different colors on it if you want, but for bees, red is better. Um, here's an experiment I did with uh, a, mega, or a uh, leaf cutter bee and megakyle rotundifolia a species in the prairies. I was looking at trying to push them past their four inch channel length, which I saw in all the commercial leaf cutter bee applications. I actually never got to put this into practice, um, but I was trying uh, six, eight, and ten inch uh, trays, and uh, I've since just stuck it in my uh, different places around uh, the house over the years and I had all kinds of other mason bees, small ones going in it. So make sure you use wood, have a system that you can take apart and extract and clean uh, the cocoons and the condo at the end of the year. Use longer lengths if you want more females and thanks. Okay, great. Finally I can throw this thing in the fire and recycle it into heat. <laughs>